Seraphim 17 once again. This is my Yakuza 5 extra hard difficulty video walkthrough. We are in the finale final chapter and it is called Dreams Fulfilled. You'll notice immediately we have volume again, which is a rarity, but uh, yes, I managed to capture the end of this walkthrough with volume, thankfully. No optical issues here, and it makes a big difference because this game's pretty fun to listen to, I think. And as much as I do enjoy the, the, the slow jazz of that karaoke song that I've been playing in the previous videos, it is nice to hear the screams of these salary men as we dump them on the concrete. So, you get a choice here of picking between uh, Kazuma or playing as uh, Akiyama. And it's entirely up to you who you pick. I'm always going to pick Kazuma because he's the reason I play these games. I really like the character, I really like his moveset. And uh, all you have to do here is take on these this massive wave of dudes. And I've talked a lot about the combat if you've been listening to this walkthrough. Uh, I've given you my impressions of it and how I feel about it. And uh, for the most, it's, it's fights like this that really show you where the holes are in, in the particular mechanics of the combat. And there are holes that I think are easily plugged, but there are also holes that could potentially be the character of the game if you did get rid of them. So I'm sure there's an audience of people who like the flaws, but I would love to see them get refined and be sharpened a little bit, because I really like the combat, but you're going to see instances here of Yakuza being Yakuza. And another thing worth mentioning is I've not played Yakuza in a while when I recorded this, so I was kind of relearning the ropes. So if you see any moments where you're kind of questioning why I'm playing the way I am, I'm probably questioning it too, because it's not a game that's difficult to jump back into, but you do lose a little bit of your sharpness as we come back up against a boss here by the name of Canon Kanai, who does a lot of multi-hit combos, which can be easily tiger-dropped, and I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, a good strategy here is when he starts attacking Akiyama, if you stand behind him, you can tiger-drop the moves with impunity, because he cannot damage you. Uh, be careful though, because he will do boomer turns and start beating you up, and that will happen if you, if you get too close. So all I'm doing here is trying to time these, these combos, and boom, boomer turn. There it was. Hits me with a full three hit combo, thanks a bunch, and then he starts coming after me, which not a problem, because we can just exploit his, his attacks. And if you're watching this for the first time, and you have no idea what's happening here, and you think this looks like a cool brawler slash fighting game, there are aspects that make it really, really great, and you don't have to just fight in any one set way. There is quite a lot of diversity in Yakuza, so if you watch somebody and all they do is, you know, throw people into the ground and then spin them around or do those heat actions, and you're like, well, this looks boring, it looks like quick time events. There is a lot of that, but that's not the entirety of the game. You can do all kinds of different things. There's actually a lot more depth than you would think, but it's not so overly complex that you can get lost in it. It still remains pretty simple relatively throughout, and it's always fun, which is the main point. But now we're playing as Saijima, so I'm going to be doing what I just mentioned. I'm going to be picking people up, chucking them, and I'm going to be using the, the bounce to do that special spinning attack, so I can get as many people as I can, and uh, kind of get through this fight a little bit quicker than you normally would. Uh, Tiger Sajima is a cool character because his moveset is so very different to the other players. He's really good against crowds because of the spinning attacks. He's really powerful against a single enemy because he's incredibly powerful. And he has these charge moves that give you armor. And there's not a lot of things in this game that I can immediately point out that give you the kind of armor that you get when you use Sajima. I'm not really the type of player who uses the armor to the best of its effect because I don't really like getting hit in these games even though I get hit a lot in these games because in a way it's how they're designed. Yeah, but I pick up the pipe, I use the pipe to knock some dudes down and then I proceed to uh, do some of the spinny stuff. Because these encounters are quite cramped you're going to get a lot of mileage out of moves like this. It would be nice if they did a little bit more damage but for the most, I think the damage in this game is is one of the most balanced of the Yakuza's because the heat actions do so much damage, they counteract everything else. And if you come to the other games expecting it to be the same, you're going to notice that they do change a lot between the series and it's one of the greatest and one of the worst aspects of, of the entire series for me. Because you get used to certain things being a certain way and then you play the next one and they flip it on its head. And while it's refreshing and kind of cool because you have to adjust, Sometimes it would be nice to, to have a little, you know, continuity with them. 
but there are a lot of changes that happen for the best. There are a lot of changes that happen that you question, and uh, we're going to be just the same when Yakuza 6 drops. Uh, I'm just hoping they've changed it, because I'm not too sure how much I've spoke about my experience with the Yakuza 6 beta. I just kind of didn't like it. Um, and that sounds crazy, doesn't it? Because I think it looked great. I think it had a really interesting shift in perspective. You could move the camera better. You know, it was a beautiful looking piece of tech. There was a lot of improvements in a lot of ways. But I think they turned the combat into, like, Dragon's Lair. It just, there wasn't enough arcade combat for me. It was a little bit too, you know, uninvolved. And I, I really like the systems they've got working here. And I think with Zero and Six, Implementing those additional styles is a really good idea of adding complexity without getting away from what it means to be the game as I charge and attack here. That's one of the armor moves that Tiger can do. I get a bit annoyed with the throw when he throws him into the wall because there doesn't seem to be any way to chuck somebody when you're close to a wall without him doing that wall specific move. So it would be nice to see them mediate between how you do those and maybe have it up to the player. For instance, if you throw them and you angle the analog towards the wall, he'll chuck them into it and enable you to do that. And if you move away from the wall when you throw them, then he'll do a standard throw. It would be nice to have a bit more of a measure of control with it. And they have changed certain aspects of heat detection which tells me that they are aware that it can be a bit tricky to do what you want and you can get heat moves you're not intending to do because in uh, Ishin they've, they've changed it from having to grab the people's legs and press triangle, you just went to the legs, press triangle and you got the spinny move which is the really good wheelbarrow crowd controller so that gives me faith that in the next game if you go up to a person and you're, for instance, at their legs, you'll do something specific. If you're at the face, you'll do something specific. If they're face down on either of those points, you'll do something different as well. And maybe they'll even introduce one where you're at the side of them rather than at, you know, those opposite points. And just add to those heat actions, because let's be fair here, guys. One of the greatest aspects of this game when you're into the fighting is doing all the crazy heat actions. And these games have a hundred plus in them between the characters and between the weapons and everything. So this is a studio that appreciates that one of the best things they've got going for them is these ridiculously violent, goofy, arcade animations. And those are the ones that I want to see embellished upon because I really like the idea of them. Um, I like the idea of evolving them as well. Evolving the moves, getting those extensions, and just having multi-tiered heat actions because I think that's a really cool way of dealing with it. Um, I won't ever probably understand why they took away the red heat in this game. Because I thought it was really cool. And they introduced that in Yakuza 3, so it's, it's been a while since that was a mechanic. It was in 4, and then this game kind of... I, maybe I missed it, maybe I have uh, I didn't do the correct training or, or something. But I really missed that, that heat bar when it goes red and you get exclusive access to those really powerful techniques. It looked cool. You know, the hood in, in Yakuza 3 and 4. Especially 3. The hood in 3 is probably my favourite hood because it takes those elements from the first two games and it just adds that extra bit of finesse. If you didn't know, 3 is my favourite game. And it's got problems, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Speaking of problems, this is a little tricky here because you've got a guy with a knife. Whenever you have a, an enemy that has a fast weapon, you have to get rid of it because if you don't, they're just going to keep sticking you when you're trying to, to get close to them in the crowd. Something you haven't seen me do here, which is a really good idea, is the counter-attack that Tiger Saijima has. He has a headbutt, which is a little bit tighter than a Tiger Drop, but it's incredibly powerful because, of course, we're playing a Saijima, who is just a tank. A tank and a brick wall of damage when he needs to be. Additionally here, I, I still don't know how to do the 3-4 to four man takedown with the knife. I really should look into that because that's one of the best crowd controllers and I'm not even sure if it's in this game. Maybe it's specific only to uh, Kazuma. Because I was watching The Godfather Dictator do some of his no damage runs back in the day of Yakuza 3 and 4. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but you know when you see a guy who's a player of his level at video games using an item that gives you infinite something? It tells you just how bullshit the game is to get that kind of result. Because he's a dude who has the utmost integrity when it comes to not, you know, having an advantage or, or seemingly coming across like he's cheating. 
and I'm pretty certain he was using the War God amulet in, in his Yakuza 3 videos, because some of those fights are just fucking stupid. And I don't know if that's because his, his like, tastes and his opinions have changed over time, so he didn't mind it back then, and maybe if he were to do it now he would do it differently. But you need to bear in mind that on Extra Hard, do you know what you're watching right now? Do you know if I die here, or I try and do a reset to get a cleaner fight, I will go back to the beginning of this video. This is a 33 minute long video with everything in, in the middle trimmed out. So this is literally an hour long mission where if you die at any point, the save point is before you started the entire sequence. And that's what frustrates me most about this difficulty. I'm not the best Yakuza player, I'm not going to tell you that, that's just not true. But I'm capable of getting good gameplay when I need to. And I would love to get you the cleanest, coolest, awesomest looking fights but it just doesn't exist on this difficulty because I can't reset and without resets I can't get what I need and this is going to be a good example of it I've not fought this Majima in years like this is a different type of Majima fight I don't know why I caught him such a strange way there Majima <laughs> Aladdin so this fight's going to be pretty messy just because I'd not fought him in ages and he has a slightly different pattern to the one in Kiwami who I've been destroying for the last few months uh, these are really fast by the way, if you do not like quick quick time events, uh, these might really test you because they're a little bit too fast for me and I've never had an issue with quick time events outside of Ninja Blade, uh, maybe Resident Evil 4 just because they can be very fast in that game and occasionally Resident Evil 5 when you get those broken ones where they're, they're too fast for a human to react because you were maybe misplaced or you didn't see them in time or something. Like on my fail video, I measured the frames of how long the quick time was up on the screen when Wesker went to kick me. It was up for seven frames. Seven frames, guys. That's ridiculous. Nobody reacts that fast. It's impossible. Seven frames is too fast. Uh, but at this particular part of the fight, Majima splits into a bunch of clones and they'll avoid you and attack you. The clones will only take one hit and the best way to hit them is to wait for them to attack and then dash towards them and do the dashing shoulder barge. But be careful of massive stun locks because these guys are assholes for it. And ironically enough, I, I didn't have much time to practice this fight but now that I've got access to the ultimate battles, I can do this fight with Kazuma. And I've indeed done this fight a lot now. And did you notice another thing there, which is a big mistake on my part? I'm not wearing bloody bandings, uh, bloody bindings. I'm not wearing any kind of uh, black belt or Herculean gloves or anything that augments what I'm doing, which I don't know why I don't have them on, guys. There's no world where I would not be wearing the gear that I like to use in these games, but for whatever reason, a good old Saijima does not have them on, and I didn't realize at the time, so I'm actually doing this without any equipment on, which is not very clever because if I did have it on, it'd be a, a drastically different encounter. So really messy at this point, because I've completely forgotten how to hit these guys. So I've, I've been essentially trying to mash them down, which will work, but it's not... That's it. Do you see what I did? What I just did then is how you do these dudes. Use the shoulder barge. And now it's just Majima doing his ridiculous dashes. Here's his combo. He'll end this with a big... Uh, stab, but at the moment I don't have these timings down. You can tiger drop all these moves. Here it comes another one. The best bit of that to hit that I've got down when it comes to timing is when he does the, the weird jump. That bit there. But at the moment I just don't have it guys. So I'm getting bummed. But this is not the trickiest fight. Look at the damage he doesn't do. It's very fair. It's you know, very balanced in the grand scheme of things. He does multi hits, but they don't do a lot of damage. They're just very fast and they stun lock you. Do it now. There it was. Got the timing. Then I try and grab him and it doesn't work. So, he's going to do it again. And boom. No, too slow. Yeah, I mean, you can do any of these. You just have to know what the sequence is, know the hit strings, and know when to hit. That's the flip. You can do the, the flip. Ooh, there's the jump attack. That's a ranged move he'll only do when you're at mid to long range from him. There it was. Boom. Interesting, he let me attack him. And I didn't do a heat move. Which I did. I did the knee. Which is actually really good, that knee, if you charge it. Uh, I think you can charge it in this game. I assume you can. And then this is the heat action that ends the fight. Because we've got him down to low life. So, try not to mess up on the quick time events. They're very quick, but I'm sure you'll get them down. And I think they're the same every time, so they can be learned, which is definitely a good thing. 
then we get to do feel the heat and then we get to put Majima down and then it's this is probably the, one of the trickiest fights in the game in my opinion it's just because I don't like playing a Shineda Shineda has no counter attack so when you're up against a guy like this who does many multi hits the best thing would be to do an invincible counter attack and we don't have one because we go into a grab animation and this guy breaks it so all I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna bait his hit string and then I'm gonna hit him on the end of it with a weapon once I get heat I'm gonna do a heat action and that's all we're gonna do not very you know honorable it's kinda cheap but it's very effective and we don't have to deal with any of this I didn't bring the best weapons because I'm not a player who gets all the super high level weapons I don't really see the point I understand they're incredibly powerful and if that's how you like to play feel free but I'm a guy, I like to use my fists, you know this guys, I'm the guy who, you know, punched the pursuers, I'm the guy who punched the DLC bosses in Dark Souls 2, uh, with the good old Vanquisher seal, because it's just the way I, I, I roll, I guess. And that's what makes me so disappointed with both Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3, that they didn't have a compelling fist weapon. And say what you want about Dark Souls 2, you can love it, you can hate it, it had some really good fucking fist weapons in that game, it even had that ridiculous Hihachi fist which was great, but unfortunately they buried it in one of the, the shittest DLCs. Well, this is Shigeki Baba, and we're going to be hitting him with a stick. You'll notice I was doing that weird running attack with this. It's pretty effective, but it's also kind of hard to control, so you, you look like some maniac with a shopping trolley, which I kind of really dig, but at the same time, look, I can't turn quick enough to get back on him. <laughs> Very funny though, I did approve of this. And then I'm in a, a combo from behind, which I can't get out of. And then he stamped me on the ground because you can't recover quick enough unless you do the instant recovery, which I didn't. And there's a nice missed combo. And he's in heat mode, which actually matters a lot. If you don't know, when an enemy goes into heat actions, they get armor. They get armor, they get potentially a damage increase, they get potentially access to moves they don't have. It comes with a lot of variables, which I'm not 100% certain on. But the most important thing is they're, they're more difficult to flinch. And they have... Uh, extended additional properties so you know the easiest way to say is think of them like super saiyans or something along those lines when they power up they get stronger in a lot of ways they get more resilient and it reflects in, in what they do but once again the universal standard in yakuza if you can get behind them they cannot escape your hit strings and that's what you want to do you want to bait a move that's got a lot of forward momentum, you want to dodge around it, and then you want to combo them from behind. It's really easy to do with somebody like Kazuma and somebody like Akiyama. Not so easy to do with Shineda outside of uh, if you do the counter that does the, the grab. I don't know if you can disengage the grab and combo. That would be great. Maybe that's how you, you play as him. This character is wearing equipment that's, that's decent. Both bloody bindings, that weird... Uh, baseball talisman and the black belt to make the throws better so this guy actually has stuff on him that you want to wear and there's a lot of stuff in these games that you want to experiment with and, and get your own style like the bloody bindings make your character take more damage and a lot of people think wow why the hell would I want to wear that because it's the best item in the game is the answer it gives you increased heat um, creation you know, you produce more heat with your actions, and heat actions in this game are the most powerful aspect of it. So, that is, if, the only way that that tool gets any better is if it increases damage. Like, if it doubled your damage, it would be insane, because a tiger drop would probably end boss fights very quickly. And I would love it to do that. I, I You know, like, there's, there's a payback ring in, in some of the games, where when you're at low life, you get a damage boost. But the damage is never what I want it to be. I want the damage to be so high, <laughs> if I do a heat action, you will die. <laughs> like, you can watch Amon fights from Yakuza 2, where people use bloody bindings and they use payback ring, because both of them in that game gave you damage increases. And all he does is he's got critical life, he goes up to Amon, he grabs him and smashes his head against a wall and he's dead. <laughs> and he does that for every phase. Because that's how powerful that, that stacking of damage was in that game. And Yakuza 2 is a great game, but it's also very difficult. Because they did not give a shit about balance. They did not give a shit about locking you in a tiny room with a bunch of people hitting you. They did not care about a group of people with guns stun locking you. And there was a lot of it in that game. Like, if you think Yakuza 3 is hard, Yakuza 2 is harder. And a lot of people tell me that Yakuza 3 is the hardest, and I just don't get it. 
Like, I beat that game on hard. I haven't beat it on extra hard yet, but it's something that I'll probably get down to doing. I thought Yakuza 2 on normal was harder than Yakuza 3 on hard. Because that game just didn't work as well. And you didn't have the same tools, and the scenarios were so, so insane. But this is a group fight with a boss, and we get to play as Akiyama, who is amazing against groups, but he's a little weaker against single enemies, just because his hits don't do as much. He is a, a mass fighter. He's not a one-hit smasher. He's somebody who has to hit people a lot. Like, if he was an MMA fighter, Akiyama would definitely be somebody like... Probably Frankie Edgar. He's the kind of guy who dances around and has to hit a lot and isn't really known for that knockout power. Uh, that being said, of course, Frankie Edgar's not a big kicker either, so the, the contrast ends there. But you get what I mean. So my strategy here uh, is to bring a weapon with you that's pretty good. The first time I did this, I did this with a baseball bat, which was like a tier 8 baseball bat, so it was really good. This time, I had this golf stick, this golf club. So I'm using this, but all you need is a weapon that has multi-hits, knockdown, and can clear out the dudes for you. Because once you start getting hit from behind in this fight, everybody will hit you. And of course, the boss has insane armor, so you can't interrupt him. This is a cannon, which is ridiculous, but why not? I didn't mean to hit that guy. I was trying to get my weapon off, and I was changing between weapons. Because there's an animation to, to get rid of your weapon. And you cannot move while you do it, it freezes you, which is very archaic, but it's the way the game works. So I've got some heat here. I should be running into the crowd of three people and doing the triple kick, which is this. Best way to get rid of groups. Throw somebody, get your heat back, do the triple kick. There's me kicking an item into that dude, getting some heat, trying to dash away, trying to come back on myself. There's the triple kick. Such an effective strategy, but if you get anything else, it's the most frustrating thing in the world, and it happens all the time. So, here's me trying to build some heat, getting away from the boss. Not working too well, thanks to the added aggression of the goons. There's a nice hard knockdown. If this was God Hand, you could charge a, a, a charge move and get some iframes, extensions. That'd deal with groups really well, but not so much in this game. And this is a mistaken running attack that's just going to give me a single heat move, which will get rid of one guy, but it's not ideal. And these are the fights that I disagree with. I don't mind big groups, because I think they can be very silly and fun, but I don't like them when there's a boss in there who's just rushing you down, hitting you with armor, and enabling you to get flinched so his buddies can fuck you up. Like, look at this, all I want to do is get rid of the bat. Uh, get rid of the club, sorry, and I can't do it because it takes so long to get weapons off because the game is, is really, really old school with that. It's straight up Resident Evil 5 bullshit. But there's the triple kicks. And then we can continue onwards. I hope Yakuza 6 gets rid of that. It's just really arbitrary. It's the type of stuff that, in a game like this where there's 20 dudes trying to kick you in the face, why the fuck would you ever want to not be moving? It doesn't make sense. It's, <laughs> it's an old school hang up when it comes to game design. But we're, we're gradually weaning them down. When it's just us and the boss, he's dead. Because Akiyama has a counter-attack, which we can use. And this guy has the most predictable pattern of any of the bosses. Because we've fought him a few times now, so we know exactly what he does. And it's just a case of getting on top of his moves and kicking him in the face. Uh, that was an accident, by the way. Didn't mean to do this. I've already lamented why I think this mechanic is lackluster. Because you get it when you don't want it and you waste it. Whereas in Yakuza 4, this move is amazing because you do it intentionally and it's always really useful and it doesn't have this bullshit kanji animation nonsense that you have to watch all the time. Here he comes. Is this the feel the heat action or is this just a counter action? Don't you get a fire extinguisher on one of these and smack him with that? It's a pretty cool one. Some really nice animations here. It's great cinematography too. They, they really know what they're doing when it comes to that, and I wish more games did this. Like, you might ask yourself, why do you like Yakuza Chris? You're not a big sandbox guy. You don't really like GTA. Isn't this just that, but Japanesey? And it is, in a lot of ways, minus the driving. But it's the fact that the fighting feels so good. I come back to this all the time, you know? People have heard me speak about this ad nauseum, ad infinitum, whatever you want to say. If a game has compelling combat, or oh, there's some something in that that's satisfying and fun, like getting stun locked up against a lamppost by a boss. 
I, I like it, you know. It's it's it can carry a game for me if the combat is worthwhile. I will put up with the bullshit to get to the good stuff. There's the counter. And then I think this is to feel the heat to the end. And Yakuza does that in spades. It's got a lot of charm. It's got a lot of fun distractions. I do feel though, it, it's it's not quite there. It's like 75% of where it could be. And if it ever were to get that extra percentage, it'd be unstoppable. Because it's just that right edge of goofiness and that wrong edge of, of it needs that extra measure of something. And I think every Yakuza player understands what I mean. It's just shying away from greatness. Uh, this is the final boss, spoiler alert, and that is a very fast attack. So, here's some bad timing on Tiger Drops. This boss has the biggest life bar I've ever seen in these games. So this is a really long fight, but it's also my favourite final boss in any of the games I've played. It's really good. And once you get the timing down for the two, the two punch combo, you can tiger drop this consistently. I know because I've done this fight a lot more now thanks to the ultimate battles. And uh, all we're going to be doing is biding our time to hit those tiger drops. And once you know the patterns, you can do them consistently and you can really wreck this boss. But you need to be aware that he does two animations that are very similar. He does a multi-hit combo, and he does a two-hit combo, depending on your range and depending on if you get hit by them. If he does the two-hitter and stops, you can be put into a situation where he'll do one of the faster moves up close. He also has the ability to stun you when he does a jump attack, so be very careful of that. And this is all a stun lock, too. Once you're in this, you're in it for until he gives you a gap to get out, and the gaps are, are few and far between. You can pick up the furniture if you want to and smack him with it, but he's very quick, especially when he's in heat, so you want to, to kind of watch him. Like, he covers a lot of ground. If he grabs you, it's a mistake because you have two choices. You can get him off with circle or you can get him off with a heat move, and both will do good damage and enable you to kick him on the ground and things. And is this the transition throughout the door? I think it might be. This entire sequence is punctuated by these moments. And they all have quick time events, so you want to be on the ball or you might take damage here. But the, the cutscene is just really fun. It's it's a great one-on-one, -on -one, this. And Shock Horror, I really like Aizawa's aura. I think his heat and the uh, effect they've got when he punches and it does those like pink swirls and stuff, I think it looks really nice. It's one of my favourite aspects of these games where you come up against somebody and they go into heat mode and their aura looks really cool. I think the third game did those really well. It made you feel and it made you look powerful. And when the bosses did it, it, it felt like two really colliding Dragon Ball Z-esque powers and I liked that. And they kind of lost it with this one. You don't see the, the visible aura quite as, as dominantly. Like his looks great. I think ours looks kind of crap. Looks a little bit tame. But it's, once again, it's just a, a personal thing, right, guys. It's just a style choice. Uh, see what I mean? Be careful with your spacing here, because if you get caught in a move that doesn't connect and you don't interrupt him, and he does that full combo, you will be stun locked. There is a, a jumping double-handed attack. You can Kamaki parry that quite easily. And then here comes more quick time events. Really good music for this one, too. Yeah, I don't think that's how gravity works when it comes to picking heavy objects up like that. He must have the strongest forearm, or the strongest hand to do that. He's got pretty... I mean, don't get me wrong, this guy's pretty ripped. If you look at him, he's got some uh, ridiculous mass. Not too good on the old separation and the definition, but he's got some bulk. And then we've got a pretty decent amount of mass as well, considering we're like 50. Even though there's a lot of you know pretty good bodybuilders at 50, but still. You've got to love video game muscles where they... They just, they look so ridiculous. <laughs> then again, if you punched people like this, it would not last this long. <laughs> it's like when you watch Rocky movies, isn't it? And they're knocking ten fucking shits out of each other and they're never getting exhausted and <laughs> they're doing it for, you know, like an hour. And no one's dying. Nobody's, you know, just completely broken at the end of it with broken hands and broken faces and, you know. Just completely gassed. Such a wonderful magic that the, the, the cinema magic of those movies. But look at this. They must have really. Maybe it's all padded with super nice carpets, so it's like a wrestling ring. Like those knees and stuff. Those knees on your forearms. Oh, not good. 
What do you think about this guy's tattoo on his back as well? The giant carp, the giant fish. <laughs> of all the animals to get put on your back, I don't think I'd go for the fish. I mean, they make great tattoos, but if you're going to be a Yakuza, you want something great. You know, give me like a big wolf or something, or a hawk. Something that looks fierce. Don't give me a big magic carp on my back. I'd be pissed. Oh, this is interesting as well. I believe that in this particular fight, in the campaign, you can pick up these... Uh, or maybe you can't. Yeah, maybe you can't. Scratch that, guys. Ignore that. When he does the charge-up move you just saw, he is completely invincible and he's getting his life back. So I don't know if you can throw him to get him out of it, but the best way to counter it is to put a weapon on and do a heat action. Because instead of gaining life, he'll lose a ton of it. And it's... Oh, here we go. That wasn't so great. Miss another tiger drop. So just put a weapon on and interrupt it. It's a really, really good way of, of making this shorter. You can't do that, unfortunately, in the ultimate battle, so he just gets his life back. You'd think you'd be able to pick up those pots that are just to our sides. You see those kind of, like, lantern decorations and smack him with those? But I don't think you can. You definitely can't in ultimate battle. I know that for a certain. Oof. Look at the heat that you get for that. All of these moves, by the way, can be uh, heat action parried. You can do one facing them, or facing to the side of them, and you can do one facing away from them, which is two different animations. And the first time you do a heat action, uh, you'll get the most benefit from doing it. So if you mix them up, you can do some really good damage here. But the Tiger Drop is so wonderfully strong against a character like this, who has a very predictable strategy. There we go, breaking his neck. And then just completely breaking his neck. Every vertebra crushed and shattered, every disc just pulped. And the dude is perfectly fine. <laughs> and I believe this is the end, guys. Just gotta feel that heat and put this guy down. And good old Kazuma. Getting younger every game. Healing in reverse. I love it. Aging in, in reverse as well. He's He is a specimen. He really is. Maybe it's all this fighting. There's something rejuvenating about kicking the shit out of a man who's probably 20 years younger than you. I don't know. Maybe it's the diet. But finish the quick time event and then get to it. But that was the end of the walkthrough, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it helped. Here's my stats to prove I was an extra hard for the people who like to doubt. It's going to tell you that it took me 109 hours to beat this game. And that is a fucking lie. I did not put 109 hours into making this walkthrough. So I'm assuming that took my playtime from the first playthrough and added it to this one. Because there's just no planet where I spent that long on extra hard. Because it just didn't occur. I spent a, a bunch of time on the first run, but not this one. So I don't exactly know what that was about. But uh, the trophy should be popping any time now. There you go. Successor of the legend. Thank you very much for watching. And you take care now.